I'm going to use a hand plane to scarf the rims and I've got a shaving pony set up uh, for my clamp. If you don't have that, you can simply use a board and lay your rim material on your board and hold it like this as you do the scarf joint. Go ahead and place mine. Be sure to bring the end of your rim all the way to the end of the board and lock it in place. Here's the mark where the overlap was, so I'm going to make my first cut from that mark forward. And I'm just taking off a sliver. I'll repeat that same motion, but with this stroke I want to start an inch or so closer to the end of my rim. And I'll repeat that again. 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 Now let's look at the thickness of the end of the rim. I think you can see that. We want this end to be about the thickness of a piece of flat reed. And we want this joint to taper from the mark all the way to that end. So I'm going to repeat what I've done. Just kind of look at that profile and go at it again. Take another look. We're still a bit thick here on the end. I want to be careful and not take off too much of the material in that area. Just about feather it out on the end actually. Now let's work on the opposite end and see where we are. Bring the end of the rim all the way to the end of the board before locking it down. Start at the mark. This time we're working on the flat side. With each stroke, move closer to the rim's end. Check out the profile. This end should be about the thickness of the flat reed as well. So we've got a bit of work to do here. You can even almost just feather that very end out. All right, let's take a look. It's those carved surfaces that touch each other. And that looks like a pretty decent overlap. Ultimately, this thickness would be the same as the thickness of the rim anywhere else. A final step is to simply round this end out, get rid of that blunt edge, and I would pin this rim together and allow it to dry before we do some sanding on it and put it on the basket. You're going to do a scarf joint on the inside rim as well and on the rim filler. The rims are going to fit right over this top wide row and the next thing you want to do is get your cable ties and go around about every four or five spaces and insert a cable tie underneath that top row. And then the basket will be ready for the rims. As far as getting the rims ready, um, they're dry now and shaped and we're going to do some sanding. Check this end here. If you need to do a bit more trimming, go ahead and trim it some more.
and I'm using fine sandpaper here. You could use a medium and then a fine, whatever you need. So you want to work the sandpaper, sanding the outside rim and the inside rim as well. We're going to attach the inside rim, the outside rim, and the filler to the basket before lashing them on. Cable ties are in place. And I'll start with the inside rim. This is the end of the rim that I carved off the rounded side. So I'll just start it as I look at where the ears are, maybe here in this area, and I'll use a clothespin and just gently push it down inside the basket and place it in loosely in, in the notches or down in like this. So that means my inside rim overlap will be here and I want my outside rim to be on the same side of the basket just following that inside rim overlap. And again I'm going to start with the end that I carved away the rounded side and I'll start my outside rim in this area. One clothespin and just let it lay around the outside of the basket. Now I want to put my rim filler in and I'll put its overlap somewhere in this general area from the inside rim overlap to the outside rim overlap. And I can just remove this clothespin and start that one. Now, once I get away from where my scarf joint is, that's the area where I will begin to tighten up the cable tie. making sure that the filler fits right against that top edge through the ears and that the inside and outside rims fit into the notches. Place the rims into the notches on this side and get that filler right through the center of the ear. I'm nearing the area where the rims are overlapped so I just want to double check that indeed the carved surfaces are touching each other there before I buckle that down. Hand there. Looks like I've lost that cable tie, so we'll just find one to put in there. We have reached the final step and now it's time to lash those rims onto your apple basket. To determine where you want to start the lashing, you need to locate your inside rim and your outside rim overlap and come over to the right of that to begin. I'll determine the smooth and the rough side of the lashing and I want to place the lashing 
so that the smooth side is touching the basket on the inside and I'm going to lay the slashing in a space and come up underneath the inside rim and underneath the rim filler. Maybe use a packing tool to help me do this. Once the end is anchored, I'll fold back a tab and slip this tab underneath the outside rim. So essentially this end is just up one side of the basket and down the other. And I'll leave this tab here as a marker of my start and cut it once I've lashed around completely one time. Just double check myself that my smooth side is out and I'm ready to, keeping the smooth side up, feel all the way back to the end of my weaver. There are a couple of different approaches here. You can take your scissors and trim this end into a point. That makes it easier to slip through the space as you're lashing, or you can use some kind of a lashing tool. And I'm gonna use this easy lash tool that's for a quarter inch wide material. So that just slips right into the end, end there. Here's the beginning tab. So the next space between spokes is my first space. And I insert that lashing underneath the rims and that top rim row. I pull an arm's length and bend the end around and into the next space. So here I'd like to have a loose loop of material and go again next space. Just continue with loops until I reach the ear. And I want to be sure that I'm bringing the lashing to the outside before I insert into the next space. This is the first half of uh, an X or a cross stitch that happens right across the outside of that ear. All right. Now I have this long length or big loop on my left hand side here and this is what becomes the first tight lashing stitch around my rim. So to make that happen, I reach to the inside with my right hand and I pull. Oftentimes this piece will flip, so I just want to straighten it out before I pull it on down. And before I tighten that stitch, I will push the rim filler down and pinch the inside and outside rims together, then tighten that stitch. Take this big loop and toss it over to the left to keep it out of my way. And I like to go ahead and clip this cable tie. Get it out of the way. And the same motion because again that big loop becomes the next stitch that's tight around the rim. Straightened, straighten the piece out. What I'll do from now on is with every stitch, before I pull it down tight, I will reach in and re-tighten the previous stitch, pinching the rims together, pushing the rim filler down, and you can see that I'm actually laying that stitch diagonally across the end of the spoke. Big loop to the left. Make sure the piece is straight. Retighten the previous stitch. Push the filler down, pinch the rims together. So you can just get in a little zone with this. And the big loop to the left.
retighten in the previous stitch. And again, what you're seeing is some extra space in between these elements right there at the ear, and that's due to the thickness of that ear to where the notch is carved. Big loop to the left. Retighten the previous stitch and tighten the stitch that you're on. Um, I want to check the handle placement now too because oftentimes the ear is not straight in alignment with that spoke and I just want to see where the handle rests on both sides of the basket before I tighten that down. Maybe do a little adjustment on the ear on the opposite side and check that swing again. And I'm kind of looking here at the space between the rim and the handle, or the position of the handle as it relates to the rim. So I'm happy with that. And now I'll tighten that on down. Big loop to the left. So I've reached my the end of my lashing, and I'm gonna repeat what I just did. I'm gonna pull one arm's length out, bring this end around, and make some loose loops ahead. Being sure that I'm going under just that top wide rim row every time. I'm not catching any of the quarter inch weavers. Okay, and here we go again. I'm gonna clip away the cable tie. My big loop is on the left. Retighten that previous stitch, placing the lashing stitch and tightening the stitch that I'm on. Now when this lashing gets a bit dry, I'm going to just uh, spritz it. The part of the lashing that needs to stay wet is this piece here that's coming from the inside and that is going to turn into that next wrap around the rim. So you don't necessarily have to re-wet the entire length, but I'd say 18-24 inches here is what you want to be sure that stays wet. and we're ready for another arm's length and some more loops ahead.
as I continued to lash around, I reached this mark. And if you'll remember, that is where the last row of quarter inch was tapered off and that tapered end was left on the inside of the basket. So this just reminded me to catch that end when my lashing stitch went right through that space. We'll come on around to the beginning. This is the tab where I started and I've lashed to the stitch just before that. Trim that as close as I can. And I've got a bit of length on this weaver, so what I'm going to do is finish the first lashing. Turn and start in the opposite direction. As you tighten these stitches on the double lash, be sure that you pull them so they cross on the top edge above the rim filler. So we're simply lashing in the opposite direction. Go back and tighten. So it's about time to add a new lasher. I like to leave myself several inches of, of the old lasher here. Um, maybe I'll take one more stitch. And we'll get the new piece ready to add on. So this is my new piece of lashing and I've soaked it. I might um, trim the edge of it just a bit on both sides. Just narrow it up slightly. And here's the last tightened stitch of the old lashing material. And I'm just going to lay these two pieces together and work my new piece up into that space a bit. And then pull both of those back down tight so that my new end is caught up underneath that rim and up the other side just a bit. Okay. Now I'll move forward with my new end. And I'll be tightening that down two or three stitches. And I'll grab that lashing tool. Got a tight spot right there. a few stitches and I'll go ahead and show you what we'll do at the handle since we're there. 
So here's the lashing going into one side of the ear and I want to be sure and bring the lashing around to finish up that cross and insert it on the opposite side of the ear before I continue. So let's tighten up these stitches. And I'm keeping my big loop over to the right this time. Retighten that previous stitch. Tighten the stitch that we're on. It's like coming down the home stretch almost. So we'll go back and finish off the initial lashing. We want it to be good and wet for us to work this. And I'm going to put the lashing tool on again. And I want to duplicate that first stitch that I made with the new lashing. And just align that as well as you can. Pull this down tight. And there are a number of ways of finishing this off. I'm going to show you how to do a lock stitch. So with the lock stitch, we want to get the end of this lashing down under a couple of rows of weaving. And I believe I'll trim this end and use my packing tool. So I'll go down under these top two rows. Just check to be sure that's really tight. straight down. Then I'm going to fold this end up and tuck it over this row of weaving, under that row of weaving, and up under the rim. Before I tuck it, I'll just check to see what length that piece needs to be, probably about right there. And I'm going to cut the piece to length. and that locks that stitch in place. And this is the same way that you will finish off the end of the double lash. Just finishing off the final piece of lashing. Getting ready to tuck it away here. And you can see a little bit of 
hairiness on the reed and you can trim that inside and out with your scissors. Just take your time and, and do that. I'll do a little more trimming later. On the bottom, I like to sand off that last pencil mark. And on one of these spokes is a great place for you to sign your basket and put the date there. I really hope you've enjoyed the instruction. I thank you for joining us and may this lead to many more basket adventures for you.